Welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute since you've done a coding video, but I wanted to answer one of the questions I received on a video um, where I was doing a lot of peak picking and I received a question about, uh, I guess, two things. One, can I count the peaks that I have selected? And two, can I build a function that can actually identify the shot noise in the data? And so let's tackle that a little bit. I've already written the code, and so I, I really want to walk through it and show how we can write our code to be flexible to either find the major peaks we're looking for or adapt it to find these sort of sharp shot noise peaks. Okay, so here is the code we've got. At the top of this, we have our standard set of imports, NumPy, Pandas, Seaborn, Matplotlib. Again, plotting, numerical processing, um, IPy widgets, which we'll use to actually do the dynamic processing. And then our find peaks that I import as FP to actually do the peak picking for us. Run that cell. In the next code block, I will create the data that we'll use to simulate this shot noise. And so the analytical signal in this case, in this, in this scenario, will be the sinusoidal waves. I've truncated the points below zero. And then you can see that I have arbitrarily selected some points where we have shot noise added. My shot signal is, is indicated here. I'm assuming a quasi-square wave. So for a short period of time, I have a spike in the signal, and then it returns back to zero. And here are the random locations that I have selected to apply the signal. And so what I've done here is I've taken my Y signal, I add the shot noise to it, and then I return the update of Y, and that's what I've plotted. So we've already discussed how we can use the find peaks method from SciPy to um, do the peak to do the peak picking, and if we just use some arbitrary parameters, you can see that without the proper peaks, we can actually select all of these peaks where we have our analytical features here and our shot noise all being detected because they meet the criteria for a peak width of at least two. This WLIN parameter, which is sort of tied to prominence, you can look into the documentation to understand how, but it sort of de roughly defines the width that the prominence will assess or will be assessed for. And so with these conditions, all of the peaks are selected. Now I'll demonstrate how we can alter these so that we only select the sharp signals here. In another video, I created this peak picking parameters function that took in a set of arguments so that we can actually functionalize this process. And with the proper inputs, you can see that we actually can select just the shot noise. And the, the idea really is around looking for a narrow peak width and selecting the prominence accordingly. But I want to demonstrate how we can take these ideas and with the widgets, we can actually dynamically select the all the peaks like we started off at the beginning or just the shot noise signal as we have here. And so here I take my peak picking parameters function, I pass it to the interact method, which is from my IPy widgets. And then I have my input, so with WLIN and prominence. And we get this widget here where we get dynamically select various options for these variables. And you can see that as we adjust these variables, we can alter the types of peaks we are selecting. So this gives you a nice way to build functions that can be quite dynamic and interactive. I'm also highlighting the number of peaks that are selected. And that's just by looking at the length of the peak list. And that was added here. I forgot to mention earlier that this peak index is an iterable, so we could just pass it to the length method and then return this F string that gives us the number of peaks that were detected. Um, and I've just added that because of the question that I had received. So in any case, I hope this helps you see how we can adapt a lot of the tools that we've built over the course of multiple videos in this channel to do things like selecting shot noise from our overall signal. Similarly, we could tune this to ignore the shot noise and just look at the peaks of sufficient width or we could go back and do signal processing. Very likely if we were to use the right signal filter, we could just smooth these out if they aren't important to capture. But in any case, I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Surprise!